All right, so let's turn our attention now to the actual nervous system itself, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, one of the keys that I, I and the reason I put this uh, here for you is that um, probably one of the most effective memory tools we have uh, in terms of memorizing and remembering things is something which we'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about memory is uh, something that is simply a hierarchy and that's essentially one of the keys in understanding the the nervous system itself and so um, overall uh, obviously we start out on top with the nervous system and it breaks itself down to uh, component parts that um, you can then r relatively easily remember. You have two major components um, of the nervous system itself. The peripheral, which is pictured, uh, uh, which is pictured on your left here, and um, and the uh, central CNS. And the CNS is essentially composed of the brain and the spinal cord. That is it. And the peripheral is pretty much everything else. And so uh, on the one hand, uh, we have the autonomic ANS, uh, autonomic nervous system, which includes uh, the involuntary self-regulating, self-regulation uh, components that uh, we don't have to really think about, um, and uh, internal organs and things of that sort that are, that are um, internal organs that are uh, managed by the ANS, autonomic nervous system. Um, the other component of this is the somatic nervous system. And whenever you hear the word soma or somatic, usually uh, soma is the Greek word for body. And so uh, when in the, the uh, somatic nervous system, which is a component of peripheral, uh, this is all voluntary movements, um, and that's uh, basically the, the the components, obviously, that we have uh, control over. So voluntary movements is somatic. Um, skeletal muscles, you could add that. The further um, the further component down, uh, as you move, not down, but the further differentiation of the ANS, the the autonomic nervous system, are two other component systems that break down. One is sympathetic, and the, the second one is parasympathetic. Parasympathetic. I'll just go that far. Um, sympathetic is arousing, or arousal, and uh, so um, when your body needs a lot of a energy and attention and action um, it, you know we just like I said I and I refer to it because I'm in the midst of watching it is the Olympics the sympathetic nervous system is um, is quite active when athletes jump into the pool or, or go through their routine the sympathetic nervous system is off and running um, the parasympathetic is part of what brings it back down it's the calming and typically, when you see an athlete do what they do, oftentimes they have a hard time actually coming down. So the sympathetic elevates and the parasympathetic uh, decelerates. And they work together. And so when, when one is finished, the other uh, continues to brings it back down. Uh, one of the, the uh, things that I noticed uh, over the past couple of days was when Missy Franklin was uh, did one semifinal and then she moved right into another final and her coaches made sure that that uh, she did something to to bring her system back down so that it could be then ready to ramp back up when the need was when the need was uh, presented in the next um, um, in the next uh, race so I didn't spell this quite right it's sim if you want to get that I don't have no space sympathetic okay so the the main components of of um, the the nervous system peripheral CNS 
you go further and dif differentiate out the peripheral system. You have the autonomic nervous system. You think automatic, and that's an easy one to remember, and somatic, which is voluntary movements. And then the autonomic nervous system differentiates down further into the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. All right, now let me um, let me just uh, move uh, or move to uh, the each of the separate systems themselves. Um, the peripheral nervous system uh, is is uh, we've already talked a little bit about uh, the the component parts of each of the overall system, and um, and the peripheral, like I already mentioned, breaks down into somatic and somatic um, and autonomic. Now, like I mentioned, autonomic, autonomic, one way I think students um, can remember that easily is thinking automatic. It's the self-regulation. These are voluntary, so think of body um, and th then think of voluntary um, and this is automatic and then that leads to self-regulatory or self-regulation um, the what you see pictured below is each of the different systems that are part of the sympathetic and uh, uh, parasympathetic but somatic is really all um, part of what we do and how we operate and handle ourselves. Um, the autonomic uh, breaks down into um, sy sympathetic and parasympathetic. When you think about someone who's sympathetic, uh, sympathetic just simply means to feel with. And essentially when uh, the system uh, it needs energy and needs um, focus, needs arousal, then um, the paras or the sympathetic nervous system kicks into gear. And you can see by all the uh, the uh, aspects of of whether it's the heart or whether it's the stomach or the liver or any of these other components, they all kick into uh, high gear essentially. Um, when the uh, need is uh, no longer present, then the parasympathetic brings it all back down. And, and so it brings things down, it decelerates um, everything, accelerates everything else. Um, the, the, the good example of this would be that you know, if for example you were um, out in you know, out in the mountains uh, camping and you heard some sounds outside, uh, outside of your tent, some snuffling and etc. Your sympathetic nervous system would start to kick into high gear. Your eyes would dilate so you could see see um, uh, movement easier. Heart would pick up. Um, your stomach would contract. Uh, maybe you'd get uh, cold in your extremities because the blood would be rushing to the center of your body. And then you open it and find out that you forgot to let your dog in. Um, and the parasympathetic brings it all back down, essentially. So sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. We can see uh, uh, disorders, if you will, of the parasympathetic uh, where somebody... Um, where this particular system doesn't work. Uh, some disorders, headache disorders, are, are related to a parasympathetic mediated uh, problem because uh, the, the system increases as a result of focus or tension uh, or whatever, but then there's no mechanism to bring it all back down and that's what's missing and therefore then the person is left with the head pain uh, and the headache that that is left over from the tension so um, the sympathetic and parasympathetic are complementary systems they work together 
when one doesn't work, uh, the other, uh, then the person experiences a lot of uh, discomfort. You can have somebody, for example, who has an overactive, if you will, sympathetic nervous system. Uh, Folks that have experienced uh, abuse um, oftentimes have something that we refer to as uh, hypervigilance. In other words, they're, they're, um, they're watching the world around them with a high, high degree of, of um, uh, intensity. Um, and with this hypervigilance, uh, their system never quiets. Uh, it's always on, on a high alert. And when that happens, uh, it's exhausting for one. But then their tendency is to misinterpret a lot of cues because of, of their um, uh, high level of uh, attention to detail.